I'm Matt Pittman, CEO and pit master of Meat Church. Throughout my barbecue life, I've been lucky enough to make some amazing relationships with some of the top pit masters in the world. For this series, I've convinced them to share with you guys some of their best kept secrets. So fire up your pits, it's time to meet the masters. Hey guys, I'm Matt Pittman of Meat Church, and obviously I'm not in my outdoor kitchen today. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas at Heim Barbecue, their river location. Gonna hang out with my buddy Travis Heim, and I've got something super special planned for you guys today. Travis has agreed to make the first ever video on his famous bacon burn-ins. Smells awesome, let's get inside and get to cooking. All right, well, I'm here with my buddy Travis. What's up, Travis? What's up, man? Good We're to gonna see do you. the awkward fist bump since you're all gloved up. I'm ready. I'm gloved up. <laughs> oh, I'm way, way excited about today. Uh, Travis is the godfather of the OG bacon burn-ins, and these are different from the pork belly burn-ins that you see all over the internet. I've actually never seen a proper video on bacon burn-ins. I'm super excited about this. I'm in shock and gracious that Travis yeah, has agreed to do this. <laughs> uh, but man, you know, like I said, a difference in going raw pork belly into pork belly burn-ins that we see all over the internet. I'd love to hear you uh, tell us what's so different and how you go about it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we've ever done a video on this, so this is kind of an exclusive. This is a big Pretty, deal, uh, the exclusive exclusive. Meat Church exclusive, so uh, yeah, so like, it started bacon burn ins. We had a food truck we opened six, almost seven years ago now, and we put it on the menu. And the idea was to do a Kansas City style burn in, but do it out of a smoked pork belly bacon instead of like using a brisket, because it's kind of sacrilege yeah. in Texas like to do that. So for us, it was like, okay, how can we do something that's a little creative? So the pork belly burn ins, the bacon burn ins, we get that question a lot. There's not really too much difference to it. Like, let's just say step one starting out, this is a slab of wonderful Nyman Ranch pork belly. That's all you need. It's just completely raw pork belly. There's nothing to it. We haven't done anything to it. If you wanted to, you could rub this, put it on the smoker, you know, cube it, do all that. That, I guess, is more of a pork belly burn in. The only difference for us is we basically make our own bacon out of this. So what we'll do is we'll put a cure, a lot of brown sugar, salt, a little pink salt, That'll go on for a few days in the fridge, basically. Uh, draws out a lot of the moisture and then we'll cold smoke it. And then that becomes a slab of bacon. At that point, then we'll rub it and we'll do the final process. So all in, it's like a week's worth of work for one yeah. little bite, but you know, I feel like it, uh, it, it comes out good. Well, it's that one little bite that put you on the mat and made you as famous as you are. I mean, we're oh, here man. in the smokehouse at the river location, one of your three locations with more to come so you know barbecue mogul status as i like to say but just one day at a time you know <laughs> we're trying to get through one day at a time but this well, is definitely our most popular thing like yeah we sell a lot of brisket but um i think last year we did it was like 22 tons of bacon burn ins that we sold well that's what i'm having for lunch today heck so. yeah well, let's, let's get into it. it yeah so like again you could do raw pork belly you could slice this rub it you're good do pork belly burn in this is what we're gonna do. So we got our cure here. And this isn't like maybe a traditional cure. You can see yeah. it's basically brown sugar. Got there's some a lot seasoning. of salt. Yeah, and it's just, you know, there's not much to it. We have some seasoning, that's the other thing. If you want a basic cure, salt and sugar is all you need really. But you can add some other stuff. I've seen people do like maple syrup, you know, you can do some herbs. This is kind of just traditional. And then this cure complements the rub that we'll put on yeah. later. A lot of brown sugar, a lot of spices. Um, so yeah, this is all you do. You take this and we'll kind of like, we're not going to be too crazy with it. We'll just sort of sprinkle it on. The idea is like, this is going to draw out some of the moisture. It's going to give you some flavor, but you know, we don't have to be crazy with it. So. so step one is to basically make bacon. Absolutely. Right. Which really is not a complicated process. Yeah. I mean, it's actually fun. It's, it's fun if you have fridge space and you have a smoker then uh, it's a fairly easy process. You just gotta, you know, move the beer out of the way maybe to save room <laughs> for your uh, your belly in there. Yeah. And so again, like, this is not anything crazy. We're not going wild with this. 
And we're really not being like too liberal with it. We just want to get a decent coating on there. And so, you know, it's, <laughs> this isn't that complicated, right? All you have to do is this, and then we go put it in the fridge. And if we honestly, what you want to do is put it in a food safe container with a lid, preferably, um, and then just let it set for four or five days. And then at that point, that's when you can put it in the smoker and we'll show the whole process. And yeah, I know we've got some, uh, yeah. some cold smoke here. So let's take this, let's go put it in the fridge and move on to the next step. Absolutely. All right, All right let's do it. We'll grab it here. All right, so we've got that pork belly in the refrigerator now step two you've got some cold smoking here absolutely yeah so let's check this out we got the moberg smoker rolling so here's step two this is the pork belly that we cured it's been sitting in the fridge about five or six days all we're trying to do now is get a good smoke on it so we're running about 200 degrees a little bit hotter you don't want to cook this basically all we're doing is trying to get some good smoke on it because then We'll rub it after this when we cube it and then put it back on the smoker. So it's a thousand gallon Moberg, post yeah. oak. Oh yeah, post oak only. The Texas way. Heck yeah, these things are awesome. So this is great for, you know, different stuff we want to do, be a little more creative so we can do a, a lower smoke on this and really get that good flavor without kind of, you know, overcooking it, I guess. Awesome. Yeah. So I know we've got some that we've already cold smoke. Let's go get that and move on to step three. Yep, step three. Let's All do right, it. Let's go. All right, Travis, so we've got some belly here that cold smoke for about three hours, yep. and now we're going to move on to the seasoning stage. Absolutely, yeah. So what you saw, we did the basic cure, we kind of cold smoked it, and then we chill it. So what we have now, we got a cold, basically a slab of bacon. So what we'll do with this is we'll put our final rub on it. It's got a lot of brown sugar, some seasonings, um, a little spicy. I'm um, a big fan of the Heim burnt ends barbecue rub that you can get at heimbbq.com. Yeah, awesome. If you're not buying meat church rubs, you can get no, our rub. You should rub. buy them both, <laughs> you should buy them both. You can afford both. Awesome, so yeah, so this is all like, the next step is basically, we'll take this, we'll cube it up. I'll kind of show you what I do here. Um, and you really, this is about the size you want. You don't want to go too small um, because we really, there's a ton of fat in here and we want it to render out. Um, so basically what I can do, take this, and then I want to go maybe, I don't know how big that is, but that's about, inch, about in, one yeah, by one or so. About as big. So you can see sort of where we're at now. So it's got good smoke on it, right? That cure kind of drew out a bunch of the moisture. And so what we'll do here is then we'll add our rub. One thing that I do recommend is if you're using a rub um, on this part of the process, you want to watch the salt content because once you've already cured it, it's gonna pull a lot of that moisture out. It's gonna be a little salty anyway, like bacon would be, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, at that point, and like we didn't trim anything, you know, ahead of time. So like here you can see, this is all just like a piece of fat. So we do minimal trimming at this part of the process, but this is something, of course, you could save, you could render it down um, to some lard or something like that. But I'll just cut this up just so we and can so see. so you're going pretty, pretty sugar predominant yeah. seasoning at this point to help balance that out. Absolutely, so like our thought is, you know, a burn end is gonna have, it's gonna be sweet, right? right? Like a traditional kind of Kansas City burn end. And so we don't really put any sauce, we don't really, you know, do much in the cook process, but the majority of the flavor and the sugar, the caramelization when you're cooking it, comes from the brown sugar that's in the right. rub, yeah. Yeah, and this rub tastes great. I think I'm gonna have some before you get to that <laughs> stage over here. <laughs> Because I'm not the one cooking today. That's yeah. the best part about these guest pitmaster videos I is I've somehow convinced my friends to make <laughs> barbecue for me. Yeah, that's awesome. You got a pretty good life. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a sweet location while you're doing that. Thanks, I've got to tell people that have not yeah. been uh, to the river location where all of your yeah. restaurants are great. But this is the coolest hangout. You got this huge area out here where people Absolutely. can hang outside. You've got a bar on the patio. Yeah. Like, I think you got a pretty good life. I don't have a cool spot to <laughs> hang out like this. It's fun, man. I mean, we got the Mobergs, we got the Oilers, we got different little toys we can play around with. So. I'm excited to get these yeah. smoked on Oilers today, show everybody a, a little different smoker, but. Absolutely, yeah. So so now the rub part. Oh, wait, and, I think I opened the wrong side for you. Oh, it's okay. So this, uh, 
this may be a little bit different, but I'm just going to take this off. Take the top Well, you know, off. we're so used to everyone so far blowing our minds with how they season stuff, so you just threw the lid out. This All is right. a very complicated seasoning process, All right, right? let's see it. You just do this. I love it. So as opposed to earlier with the cure, we want to just go nuts with this. And essentially coat every little corner, every little crevice of all of these burnt ends because that's what's going to give us that good caramelization. So just kind of toss in this. Love it. And I'd recommend usually do this in like a stainless steel bowl or something where you can kind of toss it, but we really just want to coat these things up. Well, we're making a video and want people to see it on the board here, but Absolutely. yeah, thoroughly coat them. Love it. So yeah, you see, I mean, you know, again, there's not much to that, but that's where you get those nice little caramelization you just coat this thing and there i'm like one bottle down if heim barbecue burn in or you better perfect. go to yeah. heimbbq.com and get yourself yeah. another bottle you buy a six pack so <laughs> so yeah this is cool so you know we took basically about half of a belly uh turned it into our bacon and then now this final part of the process and you can see there's a little more spices and stuff in this yeah. rub it's a little different than what we applied earlier but so now we go to our tray. Um, I've seen different people like in the cook process, like put it on directly on the racks or directly on the grates. We'll kind of talk about this, but I like to cook them in the pans. And the main thing for that is once the fat renders out, it collects in these pans and you almost have like a confit where they're cooking in their own fat and you can kind of stir them around throughout the process. But instead of all that fat rendering and losing, yeah. it kind of helps cook. And then that's where part of the cure process draws out a lot of the moisture. And then also the second most important thing, I think, cooking them in the pans, then that's where you get that crispiness sort of on the outside that's kind of hard to achieve um, otherwise. But it's, it's almost rack. like, you know, cooking in its own fat, I guess. Yeah, so. and I think that's a huge tip for people. Yeah. Uh, when I was here a few weeks ago, you actually were willing to show me that. I'd never seen anyone cooking in a pan before. Yeah. Uh, and as we'll see here in the next couple of steps, like you said, as the fat renders down, it's almost a confit style. Yep. Uh, I see most people cook, like I do my pork belly burn ins on little baking or cooling racks and, yeah. and all that fat's just dripping out and getting in your smoker or your yeah. pellet grill or whatever people are using. But uh, man, these look so good And already, too, that's so. maybe a preference thing, right? Like you don't have to do it this way. I'm, I'm a, I don't know, I guess I, I'm open to different uh, to ways, but I think for us to get that really good caramelization, we, we like it this way. Yeah. If maybe you want them a little little different texture, then uh, you know you may want to go that route. But and then at this point, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more on top. We just want to get them coated as much as possible. And this is good too. Like you don't want to overcrowd the pan because if you put too much in there, too much of that fat is going to render out and then you're not gonna get kind of that crispy texture on yeah, the outside. Yeah, that's a good it's point. Almost, you know, overkill, so you wanna right, have well, a good I spread. Say, I say let's get this pan over to the smoker uh, and get cooking. Let's do it. You go. Well, here we are. All right, we've got our oiler smoker here. J&R Manufacturing, these are big boy smokers yeah they are so here we go we got it rubbed we're putting it on and then i'll show you kind of the cook we got some wonderful pork ribs too what but temperature are you cooking at so we're cooking we want to be about 250 with okay. this so 250 post oak smoke you can see we got some ribs going too these probably need about another hour so we've had these burn-ins going probably three hours. Man, look at all that fat. They're oh, just yeah. chilling in. And that's what I was talking about. It's great to collect that fat and they just kind of cook in there. You can see they're soft, but they're not all the way like where we want them. Yeah. So these need a little bit more time. We want to really caramelize that, which we're doing great. You see how that rub of the brown sugar in there? Yeah, they look pretty. It gives a great color, but let's go. I'll show you around. So these are about ready to come off. You can see a little bit of the difference here. Yeah, like more bark. Absolutely, yeah. So the color looks great, and you can see like just super, super soft. Just Man, like those look buttery awesome. almost. So that's kind of how you can tell. So like I take this one, and then just with the lightest touch, I want to just squish it right. So that fat is just perfectly rendered. It's still like twosome a little bit, right? Like you can bite into it, but as soon as you apply any pressure, that fat just melts away. So. These are great. So what we'll do, 
take these, put them in a big pan in the kitchen. They'll just kind of sit in there on fat until we serve them. Man, these look awesome and I'm hungry. Let's do it. Let's go try them out. Yeah, let's go. Grab this tray and go. All right. Look at that fat. Woo. All right, Matt, here we go, man. Man. Check uh, it out. Well, first off, it looks like a little more than a bacon burn in. <laughs> I know this is a bacon burning video, but I was like, we got to try some of the other stuff. Dude, too. what a tray. Check it out, yeah. So Woo. pretty good. So we got our burn in tacos, bacon burn ins. Got a delicious Bloody Mary with the bacon burn in. I in mean, it. seriously. I'm not messing around. So the bacon burn in is pretty versatile. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, we try to take traditional Texas barbecue, but then we do little different spins on it. And that's what I think is cool about the burn ins is like, you can make a base, but then you can add different flavors, different rubs, yeah. sauces. Um, so it's a fun thing to play around with. But. Well, I got to get in here, see how yeah, you do, do it. I mean, it looks like, oh my gosh, Heck it's yeah. so soft. Let's Just like, one. look at that. Yeah, nice. Dude. <laughs> like I say, like, my granny could have gummed that without her dentures. <laughs> That's Pretty so good. good. Pretty good. It's unreal. So you can see the final product, you get that caramelization on the outside. The meat, it's super smoky because we've almost double smoked it right at this point. But then the fat is just super soft rendered. There's a thing that I was going to say that stood out to me about the one that I just inhaled <laughs> was that fat was like a pillow, just like super rendered. I couldn't stop myself from eating the whole thing. And, yeah. and uh, my guy here always tells me I should take one bite so we can move on. Yeah, but. yeah. That was uh, super good. Well, thank dude, you. I can't, yeah. I can't thank you enough for taking time. Your restaurant's packed. I appreciate you taking the time to shoot this with me this morning and share this with me. And everybody's got to come out here to to Heim Barbecue. So thanks, dude. Oh, Heck we're gonna, yeah. Let's uh, let's end this with a, a Bloody Mary bacon burn in Bloody Mary toast. Heck yeah! Cheers, Cheers my friend. Thank you, man. I came here for bacon burn-ins and I got that gigantic tray and I ain't too mad at it. Well, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, I gotta thank my friends Travis and Emma for sharing a gigantic secret with all of us. If you guys know of pit masters you wanna see on this series, drop a note in the comments, tell us who you wanna see. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see y'all next time. picture with Travis and Emma. Ready?